I'm just excited to be back doing something like this or just in general being it's been two years man and two years since we started the project and at least like a year and a half since like we first talked and trying to have you a part of the project and yeah finally it's come full circle and we We had a lot of plans and things got derailed but i'm 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 definitely glad to be back doing it you know yeah it's exciting heck yeah congratulations to do that thanks thanks. thank you thanks for coming on and helping us get it kicked off again yeah so um if you were a keen tree on this wall, like on the top row here, what what would you kind of characterize yourself which as? Which one would I pick? Yeah, like which one would you pick? Because every time I come in here, I kind of decide that I like a different tree. No, I like a little that. bit more. Like today, I'm feeling A or two A, yeah, quite a two, bit. Two A is a good one. You um, know, it's a confident this, tree. This bottom, all these bottom rows are real healthy and yeah, nice and mature. Drew, what do you think? <laughs> what do you got there? I can't really see them, but I guess I'd be. This one, because I can see it. I want to see. You know, one thing. So our one of our first cafe managers, his name is James Harper. Is his name is James Harper? He still exists. He just doesn't work here anymore. But um, we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do to paint this this mural on the wall, and we had this idea of like, oh, how cool would it be to put ponderosa pine trees back here? And we found this like super cool inspo picture that was like a full page out of like a really really old like forestry book an arborist magazine or something yeah it was it was sick and and uh we were like so something sort of like this and like you know it'd be kind of cool if we like wrapped it around the room or something and then james was like what if i just painted what was on this page <laughs> and so like literally like the figure two Keynes tree classification oh so that's where it came from yeah literally we just ripped it right out of the book so the art in here all shifts and it. rotates monthly but this is a yeah, staple this, this is here to yeah, stay this, this stays and then yeah our, our coffee bag wall uh, cool. that kind of like rotates those. out as we drink more coffee and find other ones that we like more what uh why, why coffee was it always going to be coffee why not alcohol or yeah how'd you arrive on that oh i don't like think that. it's an either or um i mean we've done we're definitely super stoked on some other craft beverage stuff like alcohol but um i think coffee really happened because of this space so you know our our real estate business was like the first thing that we were doing and um we really wanted there to be a coffee shop in this building because we're like how cool would that be to have a coffee shop in the building that we're building our offices out in it started out just like super selfish and um you know at the time like in early 2017 we tried talking to a handful of different people who owned shops that we liked and that we really looked up to and they just, we got sort of mixed responses. Like, you know, some of them were, oh, that's a weird spot to put a, another location. Or some people were like, you know, I don't think we can open another location. And, uh, and then Isaac and I were just kind of putting our heads together. And we're like, well, it can't be that hard. Like, we could just buy an espresso machine. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how hard just can it be? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm and, glad it's uh, up here. Yeah. And, and the thing we say is we're like, how hard can it be? And then we're like, well, it's pretty hard. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's worth it. It's fun. And, um. It's been it's been really cool to like. This was a veterinary office. What was this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So uh, this space was the was is the dog side. Of okay. TLC. TLC. Clinic. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I wish You're this was right. here in high school because uh, yeah, oh. Sandy is right there. There's little puppy prints going up to the front door, and we just left them. That's cute. Oh, kind of okay. Now I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, there's not yeah. a whole lot of options for craft coffee in the heights anyway it's just yeah starbucks and satellite and flying star yeah and we, it's not it's we, not a craft yeah we grew up in the east mountains so whenever we were hanging out in albuquerque this was the part of town we were in um so you know it, it was kind of weird like for the longest time if you wanted to get good local coffee you had to go either to knob hill or downtown mm-hmm. sure. and um and we're like well that's silly because it's hard to park and further away from pretty much every yeah as somebody that's from the far far northeast heights like that was always a frustration so then when this when i found out about this place um it was yeah it was late 2017 or so or early 2018 probably it seems 20, like. yeah we opened i think like it was december it, of 2017 <laughs> and we're like since 2017 and it popped you know and, it, and i i met a i met a client here um and it popped up on my my apple maps i was like little bear i was like all right, cool, and I'll try it. 
And ever since I was just like, this is why didn't somebody do this earlier? Because there was no good coffee in the Heights. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. And then what? Knob Hill was 2019 or, or um, yeah. Yeah, we opened mid of 2019. Yeah, we opened the mm-hmm. so our second locations in Knob Hill, and we opened that in uh, October of 2019. Yeah, yeah, we had a couple events there and did some fun stuff there. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. We're we're finally getting back to some events post COVID. Yeah, is, thank God. Which is nice. Yeah. I like I what I love is like your guys' motto or slogan. I don't know what you're gonna call it. You know, love people use coffee. Yeah. And I think it. I mean, coffee. I don't know. Creates community. I think. And I don't. I can't remember a time that I've came into this location specifically and had multiple meetings or meeting friends, or whatever, but there's not mm-hmm. a time where I haven't met somebody new and had an organic oh, cool. conversation. And yeah, it's, it's cool. the community around coffee is dope. And I think you guys do a really good job of, of that. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, pretty early on. I mean, we, we sort of call it our mission statement, but it's, it's all those things. Um, and honestly, like everything we do business related, whatever the industry is i mean that log that slogan's pretty pretty similar you just kind of switch yeah. coffee out for something different but but you're totally right like i think one of the things that we have always really liked about coffee is that it it truly is something where it's like an excuse for people to get to know each other to meet up or right catch up right or, or whatever like it's sort of it's this super cultural really cool thing that um brings people together in a way that's pretty meaningful and um you know on on our website when we like first opened like it started by saying like you know we're people people over being coffee people but we're still coffee people (laughs) yeah Yeah. and and the idea is like man if you iterate to every single person that comes through the doors we think that you're more important than the coffee we're making and then you give them like one of the best cups of coffee they've ever had in their life like that's freaking cool yeah that's cool uh, i mean that's that's kind of what we're shooting for every day i don't think i don't know anything about coffee i just know that i love drinking coffee yeah. the only time i've ever learned anything about coffee was in here oh, cool. is, yeah. yeah i didn't like come in expecting to like gain knowledge or anything i just wanted to have coffee and work a little bit but yeah, yeah it was it was cool well it's easy it's easy to talk about stuff when you're excited about it right so right. Mm-hmm. um and you know even when we hire people like we really look for people that just really freaking love people man like you can't you can't really teach that and um you know you can teach people how to make coffee if they're interested in it sure. and be pretty proficient at it, but you can't really teach people how to like deeply care about every person that Others. comes in, yeah. mm-hmm. comes in the cafe and walks up to the counter and order um, something. Unfortunately, you know? I think our world would be a little bit a uh, better place if that was hey man, more we're trying, teachable. You know, like it, what, you know, one, it, one, it can be very hard time. to find sometimes, yeah. you know? Well, dude, I mean, I think um, there are a lot of companies that have pretty altruistic aspirations, but, if it's not super genuine, it's hard, it's hard to maintain that. And it's hard to live up to that. Right. Um, and you know, nobody's perfect. Like I'm sure we've had customers that come in and have a bummer experience and that sucks, you know, like that's not, right. that's not what we're hoping happens, but, um, you know, overwhelmingly more than not, you know, we're really shooting for, for people to not just get a great cup of coffee, but to feel like the people in here think that they matter. And, that's pretty powerful and um, important in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I've never had a, a bad experience in any of your shops and I don't think I've ever seen anybody have a bad experience in one of your shops. I, it's one of those things where, you know, that's probably more so the reason I've always come back is obviously it's a really cool space, mm-hmm. but every time I come in here, they, you know, they recognize me and they're, they're friendly and they're just, it's just, the nice uplifting thing, especially, you know, in the beginning of your day is to run into other happy, you know, good people. Cause yeah. you may not have the, have, be having the best morning, but if you run into some people that are, you know, putting off that energy, it can really correct your course pretty early on in the day. Yeah, dude. No, that's cool to hear. Thanks for saying that. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. We say a lot of little tidbits of things that are kind of in the same vein of love people use coffee, but one of them's like, you know, if you can make every single person's day just a little bit better, like, it's going to, it's going to add up to something, you know, it's going to matter. Um, and we also say pretty frequently that like building community happens one relationship at a time, you Mm -hmm. know, like, like don't overcomplicate it. Like meet somebody new, be nice to him, you know, and stuff, absolutely stuff sort of snowballs. And, um, you know, we really are proud of the, of the community that we've been able to build. Um, you know, and it it starts with our staff, man. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, 
Sorry. Sorry. Has it has it made you like a coffee snob at all? Like, are <laughs> I've you? I've always been a little bit of a coffee snob. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, dude, it's like it's like anything. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, when you're excited about something, you want to experience more and more of it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you know, I just I I personally never want to be that coffee snob that like goes to IHOP and is like, I'm not ordering coffee here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's different. You know. I love great coffee, but I'll take go coffee from like a Circle K any day. <laughs> yeah, gas station coffee. Like I'm okay with it. Sometimes it hits. Circle K has got some hazelnut that hits hard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It does. You get your white chocolate mocha. Every I used to. I used to. I, used to, know, I yeah. used to work in Santa Fe years ago, and I used to stop at the Circle K and get my hazelnut every morning, and it. It was good shit. I have I a friend swear. that works at Starbucks in the drive-thru, and she was telling me that she saw one of our managers going through the drive-thru, uh -oh. and she's like, Blasphemy. What are, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Does like, Jacob know you're here? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, is this some kind of joke? He's, he's like, what? I can't have a white chocolate mocha sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> Pumpkin spice coming up? Go, yeah, make, I mean, go make one. Dude, I've said before, so before we open Little Bear 2, this is kind of a funny story, but I'd say like 2015, 2016, there was this trend in a lot of craft coffee shops all over the country where you'd walk in and the first thing they'd start doing is just talking crap about Starbucks and they're trying to tell you how much better they are than Starbucks. And I'm like, dude, I get it. Like, I totally understand. But also, like, every single person that comes here has been to Starbucks and you're just making them feel dumb, you know, or, right. or weird or whatever. And, uh, man, I mean, even though they're a huge, like, kind of borderline fast food company now um they've done some good stuff for sure and they've totally changed the culture around coffee and i mean a place like this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for a company like that in my opinion so yeah that's that's a good point <clears throat> so yeah i mean like when we very first opened i was like if anybody talks crap about starbucks i'm gonna freak out you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be those guys i would pivot to like the knob hill side of it open down there and then had other ventures down there whatever uh be also like on the board of well, just oh. like the association, right, with Knob Hill? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we can kind of catch up. We haven't caught up in a while. But so we, as, as we were developing um, that, that disco display building and we were building out the back part for Little Bear to kind of be like the anchor tenant. And we have a bunch of other really cool little shops in there. Mm -hmm. One of them is yep. like a micro retail collective that we yeah. run called and, and stuff. Yeah. And that actually came from our monument sign out here that says like fine coffee and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have anything. Yeah. I, I walked in there for the first time that. just a few days ago. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have but the awesome chapstick. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Dude, I think <laughs> I have some actually. Let's look. Was it the right one? I will spend yeah. the seven dollars oh, or whatever yeah, for yeah. And then I yeah. bought a Chemex. And what is it called? L Lucky bastard. Yeah, Lucky bastard. Nice. Yeah. Gentleman's lip balm. Yeah, gentleman's lip balm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, man. And so when when we were doing that, when we were first starting to do that development in Knob Hill, we knew that local retail was something that was really important to the neighborhood <clears throat> and to that business community. But retail has changed so much over the past couple decades you know um and so we were really trying to figure out how to put some cool like local businesses in there in a way that would be successful um we got oregon mountain to open their new yeah. outfitter shop that's their first expansion store out of las cruces um and they've been super super cool they have a huge following um <clears throat> and we got a little hair salon in there called prisma hair company yeah prisma. Mm -hmm. they're killing it they're super cool but we had two other spots that were about the same size and we showed probably like eight or nine different retail tenants, those spaces. And like none of them were big enough to make the leap into like not just paying rent, but hiring employees and paying utilities and insurance and all this other stuff. Right. And so, you know, we're just like, well, if we have all these people that are having the exact same problem, like what if, what if we started something that took care of the employees taxes, insurance, you know, base rent, all that kind of stuff. And then we just like sublease some floor space or displays to these people. And so we sort of do a hybrid of like a pretty low, you know, dollars per dollars per month flat rate and then a percent of sales of whatever they sell. So if you sell more, your rent goes up a little bit that month. Right. And, um, and it's, I mean, it's worked out great. So like, a, you know, a ton of businesses have been able to like really get a footing 
um, in Knob Hill, and they're all super excited to be there. And, uh, you know, we've been able to kind of curate a really cool experience for people where someone might go in for, like, yep. that chapstick. <laughs> yeah. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, well, look at these plants and yeah. these shirts. And I don't realize you guys are, like, like, I don't lack a better term, like, backing it like that. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, but it's kind of funny. My, my brother's been able to kind of like scratch this itch he's always had his whole life of shopping a bunch so <laughs> okay. he just buys inventory for the store to kind of fill oh, the that's gaps cool. and yeah he's he's good at that <laughs> that's awesome yeah you know the other thing too is is you've like really revitalized that corner for all of my college years and everything it was the the I don't disco know, display yeah the disco display corner and stuff and it was i mean it was it was kind of a sorry looking corner it had so much opportunity and you've, yeah. you've done that you know it's um from the mural to just the build out and everything like it's actually made that part of of knob hill look really really great which is something that you know i think um everybody in the area also appreciates you know you've created these awesome spaces but also in doing so given knob hill a little bit more a little more a little more shine man i hope so like knob hill is one of our favorite parts of the city it's It's, fine that's where i grew up it's yeah man i mean it's it's uh it's it's got a lot of it's important to a lot of people, right? And that just inherently makes it kind of a complicated landscape to, right. to navigate. Um, so yeah, like to circle all the way back to what we were originally talking about, I uh, when we started working on that project, I served on the board of the Neighborhood Association for a minute. I'm still on the board of Knob Hill Main Street, which is like oh, a, cool. um, I mean, it's a, it's like a, it's a national thing, but like, you know, historic Main Streets in towns small and big kind of all over the country have main street programs and the idea behind that is that you're kind of trying to like help create some cohesion amongst the whole business district right and like help people kind of support each other um by doing events and promotion and all that kind of stuff so that's been really cool um but you know there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of opposing ideas about what should be in knob hill and what used to be in knob hill and what should be in knob hill in the future um and so I think with the disco display project that we that we took on, we were really hoping to kind of like take a lot of people's boxes on both the business district side and the neighborhood side and say like, hey, you know, we're kind of trying to like get some momentum in a way that everybody can kind of get on board with. And for the most part, um, we've been able to do that. But we are so just to kind of interject at this point in the story. But <clears throat> when we were in the middle of construction, we got the opportunity to take over a uh, Knob Hill Barn Grill across the street. Yeah. And we're like, well, yeah, how hard can that be? Kind of the same as Little Bear, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Running a restaurant and a bar is just like a Same thing, a man. Shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, right? They got coffee. You got coffee. It's the same thing. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we changed a bunch of things. We tried to make it sort of like a, you know, higher end, like, food and beverage yeah. thing where it's like a know, dining more of like a dining experience rather right. than yeah club. yeah um and we divided the space into two different concepts one of them stayed as Knob hill bar and grill and then we opened uh, a concept called daydream rum bar in like the old like dance floor section of oh Knob yeah hill bar and i was grill. there a lot yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean man we were we were really proud of of what we built there and um you know it took us six months to figure out how the heck to even run a food program and and a bar but um right as we were kind of starting to like get profitable on a monthly basis, that's when COVID happened. And yeah. We, it's hard, man. I mean, like we just got spread too thin and the timing was super weird. Um, so we actually kind of officially uh, closed that space um, about a month ago. But the silver lining of that whole conversation is that, and you know, hopefully like there's approval processes that have, that have to happen. And so this isn't done yet, but hopefully we're able to take our liquor license from that space and move it over to the little bear disco floor. Oh, wow. That's cool. And, um, we actually have like a, a basement space below, below the cafe. Speakeasy vibes. Kind of. Yeah. Oh yeah. But we're going to try to reopen daydream in the basement. So, yeah, that'd be awesome. I, I was a big fan of, of your new concept of not barn grill. So I'm sorry to, to, to see that happen, but yeah, thanks man. Timing was, uh, We we learned a lot. We met a lot of super cool people and, um, Man, I mean, you can't you can't win them all. So yeah. Do you think um, so? When you guys took over Knob Hill Bar and Grill, do you think the Knob Hill Bar and Grill name hmm. like left a sour taste in people's mouths? Um, I I think it was less about a sour taste because like 
<clears throat> for a long time, that business was a really huge contributor to the whole area, right? But um, I will say that we learned that if we're going to change a lot of things about the business itself, we should probably rebrand. I think we were really excited about the name equity of like being kind of the the namesake concept of the neighborhood and saying yeah. like, hey, man, like, you know, super high ceiling on, you know, making something that the whole neighborhood can get behind and be proud of. Um, but to your point, I mean, literally for six months, like people would come in, you know, expecting, to to expect, club. expecting a club on Thursday yeah. night or something. Right, right. And then right. it's like, oh, no, we have a $12 cocktail if you want. And they're like, no. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an entirely different thing. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, some of the people who would have really enjoyed it were staying away because they were, you know, trying to not mix with, like, a bunch of college party kids or yeah. whatever. But, um, I mean, that's you know, what, it wa- what it was back in the day. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I, I'd say it's less about a sour taste and more about, um, you know, just if you're going to pivot something too much, you should probably, just like, rebrand and let people know that it's yeah. something different. Yeah. yeah. So. I can see yeah. that. Do you have the skin or anything in Knob Hill that's up and coming or more yeah, places moving no, in? I mean, it's yeah, kind of reviving a little bit slowly. Dude, so, um, you know, Titan Development just did a huge apartment uh, yeah. complex down in, like, the eastern part of Knob Hill. We're actually finishing out, um, like, a more permanent roasting facility, and we're going to open, like, a microbrewery and distillery, like, way oh, on wow. the east side of Knob Hill. And Sweet. so that'll, that'll mostly be back a house, but um, – you know, we'll have like all of our production stuff going in the same building, which will be cool. Um, that is cool. And so hopefully we can start making things like a like a little bear coffee liqueur and a couple of little bear beers or something. You know, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so that'd I mean, be so cool. Yeah, we're we're not trying to compete with anybody. We're just you know wanting to join the party in that in yeah. that area of this uh, of this business community in Albuquerque. Um, but yeah, and then uh, Matucci's bought the the old Kelly's yeah. mm-hmm. building. So I'm they're going to open in there. It's kind of like Knob Hill's going through, like it's like emerging into like a new era I of Knob so. Hill. You know what I, I mean? So it's not too. the same Knob Hill that I grew up with. Yep. And then in college, it wasn't the same Knob Hill either. And now it's like, it's going to like, at least in my lifetime, it's like, it's its third phase. Yeah. And, you know? and I think, I think the highest and best use for Knob Hill moving forward is going to be like a really cool, food and beverage district that highlights a lot of like the local talent here. Um, I know the neighborhood's a little worried about, you know, more traffic and people staying open really late at night and which are all valid things. But I think it's one of those things where, you know, when you get good quality businesses in there, it's better than vacancy for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Like by quite a yeah. bit. And so, you know, even though there might be some growing pains, I think, filling those vacancies is going to be super important into, uh, you know, kind of combating any of those negative things that have been happening in the neighborhood with some positive momentum. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd agree I agree with that. That's like a, I mean, growing up, that was like, it felt like the heartbeat of the city, but it's yeah. because I was so close, but yeah, I'm excited to see it getting some CPR and, uh, you know, reviving just a That'll little bit. That'll be cool, man. Yeah. And the other weird thing about this past year and well, almost two years now is that, I mean, there haven't there haven't been any people on campus. I mean, that's thirty thousand yeah. people right next to that neighborhood that are just gone. And the other thing that a lot of the local business owners kind of forget about is like, you know, that whole population of people at UNM changes every four years ish. You right. know what I mean? So, uh, if if the whole student population isn't used to like hanging out in Knob Hill when their class is over, uh, well, yeah, why would they start it, now? It, yeah, it only takes a few years for it to be a whole new group of people, and they have no idea that that was something that people used to do. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, kind of one of the big pushes that I'm hoping to see with like Knob Hill Main Street is we're actually going to be tasked with like rebranding the whole business district pretty soon, which would be cool. So, um, you know, we'll get to participate in like hopefully helping Knob Hill have like a super cool brand. That's um, awesome. But then too, like, you know, really creating like this uh, community of people that are you know really trying to like refer business back and forth to each other right and, like a restaurant and dining kind of experience um i think it'll be sweet man it'll be really cool yeah so I'm excited. I'd, I'd love I think, to see that yeah future's bright for sure yeah i think it, it definitely is um i guess with the whole knob hill thing uh so it's kind of a i don't even know if i dare to bring it up but i'm going to bring it up the art bus the hell's going on with that thing <laughs> it's just like, there like straight up like it's I mean, just the, there the i mean stops are there right I don't yeah so i'll say i'll say that i mean 
I I have uh, I have a few opinions about it. So when I remember when the project was first starting, everybody was pretty upset that it wasn't like a light rail or something, right? Like a bigger city. Yeah. And at the time, the the economic development director was this guy named Gary Opedal, <coughs> and I got to talk with him in passing about it a little bit. And I was just like, hey, you know, why is it buses? Why is it something different? And he was, at the time, their plan was to do all electric buses, so super clean transportation. But he was saying that the idea of doing the platforms and the buses is that it's about a tenth of the cost, and you could prototype, like, routes that people use on a regular basis. And so he was saying that the idea of, like, the Barry administration was to see which public transportation routes were the most used, were the most needed, and then if there needed to be some permanent infrastructure in the future, they could, you know, turn it into something like a light rail if they needed to. But he's like, it's kind of silly to put all that infrastructure in right away and not even know if people are going to use it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, when you put it that way, that's <coughs> honestly pretty smart, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it's so weird how, like, for some reason within our community, communication is – uh, so all over the place, it, right? It like, can be really fragmented. Yeah, you know? and, and for the most part, I'd say the local uh, news and a lot of communication is, you know, it's all bad news. And uh, a lot of it's... Isn't it, A though? lot of it's kind of, you know, clickbait. And, <coughs> oh, I mean, not bait, sure. but, like, it happens, but you don't yeah. have to focus. Like, there's a lot of good stuff to focus on, too, right? Um, and a lot of it's sort of the way you talk about it. And the art bus is a great example of that, in my opinion, where... Um, in a lot of ways, it could be a really, really good thing, but you know that whole project got scrapped, and now we just have regular buses at those same platforms, um, and you have the rapid ride running right next to it that runs the exact same right. route. Right? Yeah, it's, kinda it, it's kind of I don't know it. It it's not. But for a minute, like when so this was a few months before COVID, when they first got it up and running, and you could ride it for, for free, free, and like, <laughs> dude, it was packed out, and everybody was super stoked, and it was really cool to be able to like be at UNM and be like, you know, five or 10 minutes away from getting off of downtown or anywhere in Knob Hill, you can go all the way to uptown. Like it's cool, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, so I, I hope, I hope once, um, you know, things normalize a little bit more and everybody feels more comfortable with like things like public transportation. Well, and that's the thing right? is it, yeah. it kind of came at a, at a, at a tough time too. For right? sure. Cause I think the intentions were good in the beginning of yeah. it, you know, I don't know that its execution was the best, but also sure. the timing was just pretty rough. Because mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't really see people writing it, but also, you know, people don't want to be around other people right now. Yeah. Yeah. And well, especially. I mean, here. I hope I mean, it takes off and makes it a thing because it's just, it's, it's just, well, it's right there in the middle, you know? Did yeah. you guys, did you guys hear about the, um, the skyscraper competition that Mayor Barry tried to do towards the end of his administration. <laughs> Never heard of it. I heard some things about it in passing, but I don't. I don't know any specific details. It was no. pretty cool. So, th so the city owns this this huge block that's right off a of city plot or Civic Plaza, mm -hmm. and the whole idea was that the city put out this RFP that said, "Hey, the city will give whoever wins this bid that entire property for a dollar." And the only stipulation for you to win the project is that it has to be the tallest building in New Mexico. So there were a bunch of like pretty heavy hitter developers that were from here and also from out of state. And they put a lot of time and energy and, um, you know, paid some money. Is this where the old like stuff. jail was? Is it that corner? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I know they're going to. It's, it's, the, it's the north corner off of Civic Plaza, I think. Um, I think it's Marquette or something like that. I don't know. Okay. But, but what, anyway, what happened to it? it just so, I mean, I don't know all the specifics, um, but one of the develop one of the developers who won the bid, uh, you know, I, I I'm pretty decent friends with one of those guys, and they were saying that um, they they found out that they uh, were getting their project scrapped from the news because <laughs> after because after Mayor Barry left and Keller came in, um, something happened there to where they didn't want to move forward doing that same project anymore, which I felt like was kind of a bummer because like, what a cool way to really like kickstart some crazy incentive and momentum right, uh, yeah. to invest in, you know, building up our city core. Um, so I don't know. I hope that at some point initiatives like that end up being another, another pretty big push from our municipal leadership. But you know, like all that to say, 
you can get so caught up into things that like you wish had more traction from like a city government side of things or other businesses like why didn't people do this and so at the end of the day we really just try to like do our part and you know work alongside the people to the left and the right of us and you know help everybody be a little bit more successful and I think I think it it matters and you know we only have a few years of track record behind us but um, you know I think I think we've been able to really help a lot of people like materialize some of their cool ideas and passions and um, we're really stoked about that for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like what you said, right? When we, or how do you say it? When, when we, we all do better, we all do better. Yeah, <laughs> it's true though. I mean, it's kind of corny, but it's true. Kevin uh, has stolen that from me ever <laughs> since I said that. Well, it's catchy. It is catchy. Yeah. But it's true. I'm I mean, full of them, man. You know this. Yeah. I'm yeah. full of one-liners. I've got all kind <laughs> of one-liners. You know, Good for you, man. Uh, um, so you touched on something that actually really, I guess, circles us back to the purpose of, of these these conversations we're having. So mm. you had mentioned um, that, you know, the news that we hear and a lot of stuff that's covered in, in Albuquerque specifically is a lot of just negative stuff. And that's really sure. kind of where this stemmed from was – I think we both had frustrations and everybody um, on the team had frustrations with basically um, all of those ne negative conversations that are constantly perpetually just going on. And it's just like this noise in the city of it, you know, partly it's the media, right? But it's also just a certain mentality. It's I think it's also that's cultural been, for sure. Right. It's a cultural yeah. thing that we see just littered across like, you know, take any news article or anything that's related to Albuquerque and go look at the comments section. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's going to be a bunch of trash. And you know, you know what's funny is like uh, so sometimes I actually get some pushback from people about like, man, you should stop talking about how good this place is because then all of a sudden people are going to show up. And yeah. you're have so I ran into that sword. specifically today. Uh, Isn't that funny? I was golf, so I was golfing in the um, the starter. I was early for my tea time. You're early? Yeah, I know. I knew. Holy I knew shit. it. I knew it. As soon as I said it, I knew you were going to say something. Um, <laughs> we tell Gavin 15 minutes before the tea time. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I have friends yeah. like that for sure. Yeah. Got a lot going on, all right? You just tell him the wrong stuff. Get a drink, you get some water, you do a bunch of shit, and then he's ready to play. That's awesome. <laughs> kind of stretch. You're I, a busy guy. I don't stretch. I never stretch, actually. Uh, but even he was, like, talking to me about real estate kind of stuff. And he's like, well, I just, you know, I don't want Albuquerque to get discovered. You know, I don't want it to turn into a phoenix. And I'm like, well, I'm going to hit my ball now. So, uh, you know, <laughs> because yeah. it is such a thing, you know. And, but I, and I, I hate to say it, it's happening. Dude, the – well. Actually, I'm happy to say that. The response that I've landed on that feels the most honest and kind of the most open-ended for a lot of those types of conversations is just saying, like, hey, man, I just really want Albuquerque to be the best version of itself. Like, I don't really care if it turns into a Phoenix or a Denver mm -hmm. or what. Like, I want this to be – I want it to stay as an Albuquerque. You know, how, how do you keep Albuquerque Albuquerque? Because there's, there's so much culturally that's, like, so uniquely special here, you know, um, and climate wise and culinary wise and like i mean there's so many there's so many incredible things um to benefit from living here and there's also so much opportunity i mean you know there could be there could be hundreds of entrepreneurs that are about you know our same level of success or maturity or whatever you want to say and um there would still there would still be room for everybody to grow i mean oh, we're, right. we're a pretty big metropolitan area and, right um you know that's part of why we really want to have a super abundance oriented mentality and um you know we really want to encourage people to be as successful as they can be because there is enough to go around and you know if if we're all a little more successful like you said then everybody's going to have some more income to help support other businesses that are right. starting we gotta and like you know it's help it's, each other keep the ball rolling it's kind super of thing. Cip it's super cyclical right and and that momentum matters um and and i think I think for the people who are scared of this community getting bigger or getting discovered, um, man, just make sure that you're investing and in being able to keep some of those things that matter to you the way that they are, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's like, if you're like, I have some friends that are just like super involved in like, uh, wild, like wildlife and wilderness conservation stuff. And so they work in a bunch of areas of the city, whether it's, parks and rec or open space or with UNM like doing like water science research for the Bosky and it's like 
that stuff matters. Like those people matter and they're, you know, protecting these things that, um, you know, need to be kept as an asset for our community. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, it's like, we really care about, uh, mid scale real estate development and, you know, uh, super hospitality focused, like third spaces for people to come and live part of their day in. Um, so like what, whatever, whatever people listening are passionate about, like just pursue that wholeheartedly. And if this is your home, like, yeah, make an effort to making your home what you want it to be. Right. And so good for you guys for, you know, wanting to make your own thing because you saw a need and you want to fill that gap. Well, thanks. Yeah. And thank you for letting us be in your space and and (laughs) coming on and having fun and for sure bullshitting with us for a little while. It's, uh, it's been great. Yeah. It's been great to have you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks Jacob. Wow. What, what an organic ending, huh? (laughs) 